report was actually done by Harvard University. University. You know, they have this business school that does a lot of, lot of write, write ups on negotiation. This is the most powerful word in negotiation. Can anybody tell me what that word is? You. I have an idea. We? You? We know. Expectations. The word, the word is because. So what's the word? Because. 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 Okay. Now, the important part of the word because, a lot of times when you tell somebody a reason, if you ever think about it at work or at home, you say, you know, whatever you say, if you don't have a because behind it, it, it doesn't get people to relate to you. So, so what makes the because stronger or, or less strong is the words after the because. And I'll give, I'll give you a little story. I, I was moving down from Pennsylvania to Virginia because I was getting married. So I would go in and I would, I, my presentation to any person I was interviewing is, I would say, I, John, I would really like to work for your company. I'm really excited about what you've told me today. I think there'd be a great fit. But because I have committed to my wife that I would make a decision within two weeks, you know, and, and here's here's a key phrase. So when you say when you say that because there's a key phrase, you put your words in the middle. So because I made that commitment to my wife to make a decision in two weeks, I just want to know will that work for you? So write that down. Will that work for you? And then what you do after that? Will that work for you? You shut up because whoever talks first loses. <laughs> So you want the you want the interviewer to talk first because if he talks first, you almost got this this technique. Every time I've done it, I kick myself every time I don't do it. I've gotten a job offer on the first interview because they want to know. You got to think on, on how an interviewer is thinking. They want to know. They want to also know that you're excited about the job. Not only are they checking the boxes that you have. Oh, you can do this. You can do that. And do this. You know, from a resume. But you're really showing. I really want to work for you. And I, I'm also ready to make that decision, you know, because I've created urgency in myself. I'm ready to make that decision now. So you want to you want to use the word what is it? Because. because. And then you want to put in you want to put in your reason because anytime somebody has a reason, and it, and it can just be any reason. People can relate to that. You know, they they understand. Hey, I got a family. I got a commitment to my my family to make this decision. And I look, you know, and I also say I'm looking at other companies. However, I prefer to work for you. And does that two-week time frame, does that work for you? And, and then I shut up. And almost every time they come back and they'll say yes. If they don't say yes, then you know they're dabbling with looking for employees. And that, that gets you away from that stretching of six months where you, you have this job that's your dream job, you want the job, and you just never get back to you and never hire anybody. And, that, and a lot of companies do that. It doesn't mean that they're interviewing. It doesn't mean that a job posting means that they're going to actually hire someone. They don't have to hire anybody. Yeah. So you have to create that urgency. You think that'll help? It sounds like a bold move, but it's really a powerful tool. And I think if you use the words because, you're filler, and then does that work for you, and then you shut up. It's very, very powerful. So you, and again, this is all in preparation. The interviewer doesn't know what's coming at them. <laughs> Do we have people in here that interview? <laughs> so, so you know, they really don't know. It's really planned of how you're going to prepare. And all these things are preparing that, that you will get that offer, whether you're going to take that job or not. I want, to, I want to put you in the position that you can decide, not the interviewer decide. That's where you want to, that's where you want to be. So that's create urgency. All right, review. Let's stand up. <laughs> Get, make sure we got these three. Okay. So the first one is act, act, act professionally. professionally. Act professionally. Shake, shake a hand. <laughs> Two is uh, be there. Be there. Be, for be there. <laughs> make sure you're there on time. Preparation is everything. So make sure you're there on time. And then this one. This is a this is a nice advanced technique. Create urgency. <laughs> So, and you want to remember the word what? Because. because. And then the last phrase? We'll work for you. Right. And then, you, and then silence. Okay, great. Sit down. <laughs> now we're going to get a little, little tougher on some of these, these things as we go, but they're all really good. And matter of fact, if you just use some of these, it'll make a world of difference. Like the thank you note before the interview, 
the creating urgency, some of these will make, make, a, make such a huge difference. Now the next one is D. And this is, uh, this is what you're going to do for D. D is take a fist and you're going to go demand a decision. So D is demand a decision. And I learned something from one of my first jobs out of college. Uh, a gentleman from, uh, from Sharp, that he, he told me, you know, when you're out there selling or whenever you're out there working with anybody, is never get off the phone, never leave any appointment without a commitment to the next step. So, so uh, have you ever left a, a meeting and you really didn't get some sort of commitment? You, know, you may not get the, even if you don't get the job offer at that meeting, you want to get a commitment to the next step. So what, what happens is one of, one, one of the jobs I interviewed for was an oil company out of Baltimore called Crown Petroleum. They don't exist anymore. And when I went for the interview, I was changing <coughs> industries. And it was really cool because the voice that was in my ear was saying, hey, this isn't that great of a job. It's a pretty good sales position. And when I went there, I found out that the guy says, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, our salary is somewhere around you know, 40000 and you know, we have a range depending on your experience. And, and he was telling me, and, and you get a you know you get a company car. It's not it's not a Lexus or anything, but it's a nice nice car. And I'm thinking company car. I've never had a company car before. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, I'm like, I want this job. You know, so it's my first job. I was young. And I'm thinking, wow, cool company car. I don't have to worry about that. And you know, so he's not seeing it. So and then plus we're also connecting. And I could I could tell that we were connecting. But when I, when we, when I ended when we ended the interview. You know, he never really gave me any kind of idea of the next step. So, uh, what you want to do on this this uh, uh, this step here is is you always want to get that commitment. And when I was looking at uh, the commitment for him, I was trying to figure out what am I going to say to him, you know, to get this thing rolling. So the first thing I said to him was was, so what did you think of me? You know, as far as all the people you've interviewed, he said, well, Pete. You're the first one I've interviewed, <laughs> and, and and I don't know I don't know if you've ever ever heard this, but real estate agents, whenever you, is anybody here a real estate agent by chance? Oh, Vincent is, right? Anybody else? Yeah, I, I've always heard this from real estate agents. You know, two things they always say is location, location, location. But the other thing is, when a real estate agent works with you, they want to make sure you're the only person that they're you know, they, they're working with. They don't want you working with three different realtors. So they always want to be. They always want to be. They, I always call it. You know, if you're, you're first, you want to be last. If you're last, you always want to be last. So, so whenever you go in an interview, you know, being first is not good. So I knew right away when he told me I was the first one, it's not good. So I'm thinking, my mind's like running. Okay, we're connecting. Company car. What do I got to do to close this deal? So as we're walking down the door, I I turned around and I said to Adam, I said, Adam, you know, I, I'm really excited about this opportunity. I, I, I got a lot of good sales experience. I had no petroleum experience, but I know I could learn that you know, with your help. What do I need to do today before I walk through this door? What do I need to do right now to make, make you not have to go through the process of interviewing anybody else? And it was amazing his results, but I say that because being an interviewer myself, most people, if you take away the HR folks, the HR folks basically try to whittle things down and look at, you know, taking people out of the pile. But once you get the actual hiring manager, that's not what they do for a living. They want to get somebody to put in that place so they can get on with their life. So I always realize when I actually get to the hiring manager at the interview, I'm trying to think how can I show them that I'm the right person for the job that they don't have to keep going on. Because you know what? Even if they have a stack and they schedule stuff, they will end the process. They can do it anytime. There's no rules to this game. They can they can just stop. I, I got the right person. I got Ken. He's, he's the right man for the job. Done. So I'm thinking, how do I do that? So I, so I, I said, Adam, what do I need to do to make sure that I'm the right person for you that you don't have to do any more interviewing? And you know, what he said to me, he stopped and he looked. He was like, wow. <laughs> he said, all right. He said, I want you to write up a business plan, no more than two pages, and I want you to send that to me as soon as you can. So we were in Baltimore for the interview. He lived in Atlanta, so I, I wrote up this plan. He had it faxed to his desk before he got home. And, and this was like right before Thanksgiving. I didn't want to wait very long. He called me right after Thanksgiving, that, that Monday morning after Thanksgiving, and offered me a job. And he never interviewed somebody else. And you know what? Guess what? Before he got home to, he had a handwritten thank you note. I made sure it was FedExed overnight. 
And years later, he's still, he's a very good friend of mine. I was at his house, and he's got four daughters. And the one daughter says, oh, this is Pete Moore. He's a guy that sent that really cool handwritten thing. You know, we told you, Dad, to hire him. <laughs> I was like, it's like, oh, wait, don't tell him that. <laughs> I thought that was, that was, that was great. So that, that, it really reinforced that my techniques do work. You know, so I, you know, I've heard that, you know, that. So, so on, on, the, on this demanded decision,